Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mura here and today is a big day, this is a day we have all been waiting for, we finally got the new V-Shift mechanics and we are gonna talk about how it works and how it can impact the game as well as some of the things I noticed about it so far. V-Shift is a new defensive mechanic, you do it by using a standing medium kick and standing heavy kick buttons, right? So the combination, if you're playing on a regular PS4 pad, the combination is the circle button plus the R1 button. Honestly, I play on a PS4 pad and my recommendation here would be to use a shortcut for this. The input can require specific timing and it, it, it can be tricky to get out on a pinch, especially since you are using a face and a shoulder button. So my recommendation would actually be to use a shortcut, right? Personally, I am using the L2 button for this. I think this is what you should be go doing, you know, going forward. V shift also cannot be done while you are holding a directional input, and this is very, very big. So, for example, if I'm walking forward and I'm using the V shift, notice that I am getting standing heavy budge. If I'm moving backward and I'm doing V shift, I am getting standing heavy budge. Down back, I also get crouching heavy budge. So, to do the V shift, you have to let go of any directional inputs. You just press the V shift button, right? This is very, very big because let's, for example, have Ryu here do a block string. Let's say Ryu is going to do a crouching medium bunch into standing medium bunch, whatever. If I'm holding down back and I'm trying to V-shift, I get hit, right? For me to get the V-shift, I have to let go of the directional input. So this is very, very big. It's going to take some time to get used to it, but it is a very important detail to highlight. Now let's talk about how the mechanic itself actually work. V shift consumes one bar of your V gauge. Notice that to just use it, you will consume a one bar of your V gauge, right? And you will do this initial back step with the blue effect. If you happen to V shift or if you happen to parry, let's say parry, for example, if you happen to parry an attack, you get half of that bar back, even if you don't commit to a follow up. So me just burying reuse fireball, I am getting half of my V gauge back. This is on a successful bury, but on a on a mistake or on a whiff, you don't get anything, of course. The attack itself ha or the, the back step have a follow up and this is called V shift break, right? The break is done by pressing the button again. So notice that after, you know, when poison's eye are kind of glowing, you press the V shift button again and you will get this follow up attack. Every character in the game gets this. This does 60 gray health and that is pretty much it. And it have long range. So if you notice, this is actually going to be one of the biggest implications of V shift. You're able to pretty much punish fireballs from a really long distance. Let's here try this out again. That was almost like half screen range and I still got the knockdown on Ryu. So it's gonna be a big deal, I think, versus Firebolt characters. Now, a couple of things that you have to understand also is that the V-Shift break is completely safe on block. So here, for example, Ryu is gonna do the V-Shift break and when it's blocked, it is minus two, right? Notice that it is minus two, so he is safe. So now let's check out how we can bait and punish this because this seems like a really big deal. Something I was kind of mistaken about uh, during my assumption was that this is gonna be a frame three deal, but it's actually frame one. Notice here, for example, after a medium kick heal, poison should be plus four after a cartwheel. Crouching light bunch is four frames. So this should have been a perfect meaty, but Ryu still manages to V-shift break, right? So this is a bit problematic. This means that you pretty much your opponent can use this on wake up. They can do it during your block string. So for example, if he's blocking and I do this, let's have here you try to V shift. He can, even if I do jab, jab, he can V shift that, right? So it does seem really, really good. So you might think, okay, what is the counterplay to this? Well, what you have to understand is that V-Shift actually have a sizable recovery and you are put in a counter hit state on whiff. So this means that, for example, if he does it and I don't commit to anything, I actually get to crush counter him, right? So whenever, if you ever bait this, 
you can actually just crush counter your opponent. So this is the first thing. On with this is crush counterable. And there is sizable recovery as you can see. Like I'm walking forward and I'm still getting the crush counter punish. This also means that on a whiffed grab, you can actually also get a crush counter. So let's check this out. I'm gonna try to throw you on wake up. And what's happening here is that the V-shift is evading my throws. It evades throws as well. It evades everything. It buries hit, but it also evades throws. Notice that poison is still plus 11, right? This means that you are now gonna have to option select your throws into crush counter button. So let's check out, for example, this meaty throw situation. I still got a punish here. So this is scout again. Getting a crush counter punish on Ryu. And getting a crush counter punish on Ryu. So I think what's gonna end up happening is that people are gonna go for meaty throws a lot more often. This seems like the setup to go for now. You're gonna go for the meaty throw. If your opponent happened to V-shift, you still get the crush counter, which is a really big deal. Like this is a big blow to the V-shift. This is actually gonna be one of the main tools to fight against it, I think, right? So we all gonna start preparing for our option select out of with, you know, option selecting throws into crush counter normals. So let's talk about what the V-Shift can punish. And one of the first things that we have seen is that, yes, you can actually punish fireballs with this from a sizable distance as well. Notice that, for example, with poison, you can like V-Shift and then get a Love Me Tinder. Let's try it out here. So this is a punish, especially gonna work in block strings. You can, of course, do the V-Shift itself and get the break even from a long distance, the, the, the follow-up have a really long range actually. You can V-shift and get super. I believe this can be yeah, it's way too far. But from some ranges you will be able to get that. I think it's also gonna favor characters with really long range on their CAs, right? If you have a long range on your super like poison, it's gonna be really really good for you. So the first part is of course, like we just seen, is fireballs. Fireballs are gonna hit big was it i think i think you know you should be able to punish fireballs from a really long distance but of course you are getting only 60 damage and a knockdown into no okay another thing is of course gonna be block strings so for example here ryu is doing a block string into hadouken and that will also get shifted again of course can super or do whatever you want notice that the break is actually a lot faster than the follow-ups so to do like if i'm if i want to do a love me tender here i have to wait until the animation completely finishes it's not a cancel right you can't really cancel out of it here you have to wait until it's completely done and then you can get your follow-up attack right so this is gonna be a bit problematic i don't think empty empty i don't think empty b shift to punishes is gonna be that big except when supers are on the deck right so yes you can v shift out of block strings and one thing i've noticed is that you should be able to v shift break versus most of the mediums let's here have ryu try to v shift break if i'm doing light attack i can i can i can block so for example here ryu is doing the v shift if i'm doing lights i get to block in time if i'm doing mediums i'm not blocking in time obviously this is gonna rely a lot on the frame data on your normals but generally seems like most of the mediums you will not be able to block in time but with the lights you should be able to block and since the v-shift break itself is actually safe what you can do here is v-shift yourself to punish it so for example here i could do something like that and get the punish on ryu right Overall, from everything we have seen, I think V-Shift gonna, is gonna have really important implication for the game. Baiting it is gonna be a big part of it. I think option selecting on meaty throws is gonna be a really big deal. People are gonna go for meaty throws a lot more often now, I think. Because I think this is gonna be the proper way to go for the meaty throws. Fireball characters might get affected. I think command grab characters get affected a lot. Side switch mix-ups are also a lot weaker. For example, let's check out something like this with poison. Like this was a one of her side switch mix-ups, right? Now Ryu pretty much gets to escape this, right? So 
I don't know. It, it, it does seem like it have it's gonna have a lot of impact. I think the V shift break, the follow up to the V shift, the automatic follow up. This is gonna get used a ton. I don't see empty V shift to a punish being that big of a deal, except with supers characters who have long range on their supers are gonna be uh, in a much better situation. And generally, we will have to wait and see how it plays out, right? If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It helps the channel so much. Please check out the Discord channel. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you enjoyed my this channel. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.